Good morning. I'm Pastor Terry Haas with Tuscola United Methodist Church, and I'm so glad that you decided to join us for our devotional. Today is Monday, June 24th. Uh, this is the last week that I'm going to be putting these devotionals up for a while because the next week I will be preparing for us to come back to church. If a lot of you still request that I do them, I will be happy to continue doing them after I take maybe a couple of weeks off as I get ready for church. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll be out in public a little more and, and maybe uh, be able to talk with some other groups. But if you want them, I am happy to deliver them. So today's reading is it's kind of a long one. It comes from 1 John 4. I encourage you to follow along with me if you would like to because this one's going to ask several important questions of us. Um, before I get started, I just want to let you know that this week's devotional is taken from a women's ministry study, um, and it, it's called We Will. And so today's is We Will Rise. I liked that title. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice uh, for our sins. Sorry, I'm having issues getting my, okay, going down. Um, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So this chapter asks us a lot of defining questions. First of all, how do we know what spirits to believe? Um, then, how do we know uh, how to love each other? How do we know if God is really living inside us? How do we know how... Um, how to love our neighbor. And this answers all of those questions, uh, almost like a, um, um, like a scientific thing. It just kind of goes right, uh, through the list and just makes everything very tight. I don't know about you. 
But I've got a lot of questions in life. And my first one when I read this this devotional is, how do we live up to all of these questions? How can we rise to these questions? Do we have the answer to all of these questions? Well, we know that we can't. It's impossible. No human being knows everything. But what if rising to the questions simply means we aren't afraid of those questions? There are age-old questions like, why are people killing each other? What would drive someone to take a life? There are questions that come up on a regular basis. Who should I vote for? Um, there are questions that seem to be specific to the time that we're living in, such as, is my church really loving everyone inclusively? And all these questions and more are okay to be asking, but sometimes we forget that we don't actually have all the answers, or we forget that the answer may not be what we want it to be. We all have questions. There are also critical questions that arise in specific moments of history. Abolitionists answer the question of its time about slavery. Suffragists answer the question of its time about women's power. Civil and human rights activists answer the questions about the value of human beings. And we find that the deep truth revealed in these responses comes from God's own heart, as revealed by the scriptures. If we were to try to determine the answers on our own, or even just determine the questions on our own, we would fail. And our efforts might have more to do with our ambitions than our faith. We would also be overwhelmed. We'd be angry, resentful, bitter. The list goes on. I think we do this a lot. We blindly succumb to a trap that that I believe... Um, is caused by us being so numb to it. We, we have so many negative emotions that we forget the good that's going on in the world. Sometimes we forget that our God is God. Sometimes we forget that our God is the one that formed the mountains, who created the wind, and who reveals his thoughts to all of humankind. Sometimes we forget that faith is the foundation. God's word is what we base our lives on. And in 1 John 4, we are reminded that we already have the victory because the spirit of Christ, which lives in you and me, is greater than the spirit that is in the world. Verse 18 reminds us there is no fear in love when we know the perfect love of Christ. I know that life can be difficult sometimes, and I know we have many questions. I, I can question way too much. But I urge you, when you have these kinds of questions, dive deeply into the scripture and listen to God's promises. God will not fail you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.